Well, last time I filmed a video, it was mid-August, and now it's mid-October. And I'm sure you noticed something's different about me. Yeah, I know my hair is so long, right? No. Okay, there's, uh, there's nobody here right now. It's early, school hasn't started, so I'm going to take this off just for this quick video. The point of this video is to really look at how to interpret confidence intervals. So what I'd like you to do is try all three problems on your own, and then hit play, and we'll go through the answers together. Okay. So there's one of these in number one that I can eliminate immediately, and that's B. A 95% or a 0.95 probability does not make sense. So as I explained in the last video, um, the 95% or the 90% or whatever it is does not tell you the probability of correctly finding the mean. The probability of correctly finding the mean um, is either 0 or 1. You either find it or you don't. Um, so we can immediately eliminate B. Let's look at C. 95% of the population distribution is contained in the confidence interval. I'm not sure if that makes sense either. So we have our population, maybe looks something like this. Here's the true mean. We don't know where it is to start. We just create some confidence interval and we either capture the true mean or we don't. Now that confidence interval looks a little large. We'll go like this. The 95% doesn't refer to how much of the population is in the interval. That doesn't really make sense. Um, so it's not C. By process of elimination, we know A is the correct choice, but let's actually read A. If repeated samples were taken and the 95% confidence interval was computed for each sample, 95% of the intervals would contain the population mean. This is the perfect interpretation of a confidence interval. If I were to do this many, many times and calculate the 95% count, um, confidence interval many, many times, in about 95% of them, I would capture the true mean. Okay, number two, shout out to Olmstead County, um, home of Rochester, Minnesota. Not the Rochester that people think of when I say I'm from Rochester, fun fact. Okay, this one's very simple. Um, the margin of error is 2.5 pounds, so we're just taking 180 and adding and subtracting it. I say very simple, but watch me make a typo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, technically, I should probably say pounds, but there's our interval. Just goes from 177.5 pounds to 182.5 pounds. It doesn't say to interpret, it just says what is the interval, so we can stop with that. If it said to interpret, we would say we are 95% confident that the true average weight of adult males in Olmstead County is between 177.5 pounds and 182.5 pounds. Okay, NBC conducts a survey to find that 23 to 28 is a 95% confidence interval for the mean age of viewers of The Tonight Show. Determine if the confidence interval is explained correctly. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly look through here and get rid of anything that describes probability. So B is definitely not right because it says there's a 95% chance. And E is not right. If you select a random Tonight Show viewer, there's a 95% probability. I'm not even going to read the rest. That's wrong. Now this, um, this idea of the probability not being the correct interpretation, it is really tricky. And if you look it up, there are some statisticians who say that you can interpret it that way. Um, in terms of the College Board, and I think in terms of most statisticians, it's not considered correct to interpret the 95% confidence level as a probability. So usually the argument that students make is a scenario about flipping a coin. They say, well, if I flip a coin and I don't see which way it lands and I guess tails, there's a 50% chance that I got it right. And then they try to apply that logic to confidence intervals. Like, well, I calculated the interval, there's a 95% chance that I got it right. But that's not really the same thing because the mean is not a coin that's being flipped each time you do the confidence interval. So each time you gather a sample and calculate your confidence interval, it's not like we just randomly generated a new mean. The mean is set. The problem is it's hard to make the coin example work. I think it would be like if I flipped a coin, saw that it was tails, covered it up, and I said to you, heads or tails? You're either right or wrong. I've already flipped it. I already know what the answer is. And if you say heads, it's not a 50% chance that you're right. You're wrong. <laughs> I know that it's tails. If you say heads, you're wrong. Um, same idea. We know 
we don't know. The mean exists. The mean is there. We calculate the interval. We're either right or we're wrong. I know that's not going to be acceptable for some of you. I feel like for most of you, that's fine. You're just like, whatever. If I see probability, I'm crossing that answer off. I understand your frustration if that is not satisfying to you. I really encourage you to Google it because there is some interesting information about certain people who say that the probability is the correct way to interpret. For our purposes, it is not. And I'm very sorry if you are frustrated by that. Um, but ask your teacher or Google it. There's lots of really cool stuff on the internet. Okay, the interval was created so that the true mean age is in 95% of all samples. Age in the sample, I don't know what that means. The true mean age is in the sample. So if I take a sample of 10 people, one of them has the mean age. That doesn't make sense. What if the mean age is like... You are driving a red the back lot. Please report to the math office. Thank you. The math office? The true mean age is not in the sample. What if the mean age is 26.5? That's not one person's age. Um, so this one also doesn't make sense. 95% of all possible samples will contain an interval. Uh, what? <laughs> the sample contains an interval? I, I don't. That one also doesn't make sense. You're going to have a sample of, like, does it say? No, let's say you have a sample of 30 people. The sample isn't going to contain an interval of ages. That one doesn't make sense. If 100 surveys were conducted, 95% of the intervals would contain the true mean. There we go. D is correct. Um, if we were to do this many, many times, the only thing I would say is maybe about 95% of the intervals would contain the true mean. Um, that would be the only thing to make this better. But yeah, A and C are both, I don't want to say word vomit, but kind of word vomit. This is what happens when people try to get creative with their interpretations. It's okay to interpret the confidence level and interval the exact same way every time. We are blank percent confident that the true blank is between blank and blank. That's it. That's all you have to do. If we were to conduct this survey many, many times, about blank percent of the intervals would contain the true mean. That's it. So don't overthink the interpretations. Do them the same way every time. And also, wear a mask. <laughs>